Fall Guys is the most recent battle royale released to critical acclaim with practically everybody and their dog itching to get their hands on it so they don't miss out on all the fun. Sort of like this channel, don't forget to subscribe. It's so fun and yet so simple, I challenge myself to make it in 24 hours. Why 24 hours? Because I've got actual four guys to play, I'm not wasting my time on this shit. First of all, I needed a non-copyrighted name, so just give this a shake and... Ah, huh, that'll do. Second, I needed a decent multiplayer solution, and considering I practically know nothing about programming multiplayer games, I went with Mirror. A straightforward, super improved and well documented version of Unity's depreciated Unet API. But hang on, how the hell do I use it? Never mind that, how the hell does multiplayer even work? I'm not going to pretend I suddenly fully know the ins and outs of creating a multiplayer game, and I won't go into detail on how to use Mirror, but what I do know is that you want your game to be server authoritative. That is, the client asks the server if they can do certain things, and the server gets the final say. For example, you don't want the player to tell the server they did pick up an item, because it could be possible for the players to cheat and tell the server they actually picked up 2,679 bananas when they actually only picked up, you know, the usual 2.78. Now I understood the mindset, it was time to figure out how to move some cubes in multiplayer. I was just doing one of these. Oh, oh! This is just a simple rigid body add force upon player input, but without checking if each player instance is the player we've been assigned by the server, we could end up affecting all the player objects in our scene with the same script. So with a cheeky is local player check and leaving Mirror's network transform and network rigid body to handle the syncing, we have ourselves some basic player movement. Next, I wanted to learn how to perform game-changing actions such as spawning spheres in the scene. This sort of action needs to be done on the server, so the client needs to let the server know what it wants to do via something called a command. Which means that a server runs the code in a method, and the client asks the server to run that method. And with that, I felt I had enough practice to start making the game. <laughs> Let me tell you, it was a shit show. I decided to make three stages based off the same levels found in Four Guys, but instead of waiting for a certain number of players to qualify, the winner is the first player to cross the finish line, because I only have one other person to play this with. Which is great. First up is the infamous Seesaw map. Each Seesaw platform is made using a configurable joint that gives way to mass on the surface but drives the rotation of the Seesaw platform back to a default resting rotation when nobody's on it. And to be honest, that's all you really need to do to recreate this level. Now I just needed a player to... well... play. I tried making the controls as similar to Four Guys as I could. The player is controlled through rigid body and forces, so I didn't have to mess around too much with handling physics myself with the environment and outside forces. But it does have the downside of being harder to control without extra code counteracting unwanted forces. The way I did it works, it's not the best. The player is a little slidey during movement and it comes to a sort of rubber band halt when you stop moving. But I honestly couldn't figure out how to effectively counteract those forces, but if you know how to do that, let me know in the comments because this racked my brain. Turns out I've been using conflict joints the wrong the entire time, it either sucked clients into oblivion or flung them straight to the fucking moon! It works now. After two hours. I added a simple player jump, otherwise it'd be pretty bloody difficult, and I even created a dive ability with some talk for added player immersion. But now because of that, the player just sort of stares at the floor for eternity. So I cooked up a big brain stand-up function. To prevent the player from falling over, I constrain the rigid body and then unconstrain it whenever the player either dives or gets yeeted. At this point, it was safe to say the capsule started to bore me. Besides, he knew too much. Time for an upgrade. Pip, pop, pop. Now that's what I'm talking about. Now all we gotta do is just import it over to Unity and oh my god, what the fuck is that thing? What's a bean without a little spice? A little bit of that Mexicana heat. So I freshly baked some animations such as idle, running, jumping and diving. I wired up that bad boy in the animator and voila! Super janky ass bean bros! And to top it off, 
I even made a celebration animation similar to one you'd find in Four Guys. Since the core of the game had been created, it was time to go back to Blender and create two more levels to fully test the might of our mighty beams. But before the challenge, I needed to ensure all obstacles in each level synced across every client. Otherwise, while Billy walks to the goal without a problem, Jimmy seeing him get absolutely ravaged by five mutant goombas and two funny looking knob goblins. Surprisingly, everything worked, apart from some desync caused by a forgotten network transfer or a non-server instance, everything was finally ready for the final challenge, and I knew just the guy for the job. Are you ready? I'm ready. If you left click, Whoa. you die. <laughs> Do you? Yeah. Oh god. <laughs> oh no, I fell! I'm on the floor. <laughs> I'm weighing it down. Oh, oh! <laughs> oh god. <laughs> oh god. Oh god. No! Oh. oh! This is so much harder. No! 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 I got to the end. That wasn't the end! <laughs> this is so good. <laughs> it's all it's alright. I mean considering how long it took me to do. Oh. No! Oh no! Get up! Oh. Yay! Can <laughs> <laughs> I make it harder and put spinnies on each platform? Yeah, you can try. I could try. I'll show you try. I'm in. Right. Oh my god. <laughs> Are you ready? I'm ready. Alright, three, two, one, go! Not that hard to get hit by it. Oh god. Oh, oh god, what? <laughs> oh god, no! I just got sent back. Oh. Who made this game? What? <laughs> oh god. Oh god. Oh god. <laughs> what? I'm bad. I mean, I'm not going to lie, Stephen. It's not exactly the best controls. Right. I need to make it. It's going to kill me. Oh, no. Oh, no. no. Oh, what the I accidentally did a dolphin dive at the end. <laughs> <laughs> that's, I think that's where a panic can dive. I'm almost there. Did you make it? You I made made, it. I'm on the last one. You've done it. Two, three, go on! Oi! <laughs> winner! It says winner on my screen. <laughs> oh wow! Oh, you actually made the celebration, <laughs> and then it quits. <laughs> May the best man win. Three, two, one, go! But you can't tell which one it is. <laughs> I, I fell back. Oh, oh! Here we go. Just like normal fool guys, you can tell which one's which. Yeah, but that one's a little bit more nuanced, isn't it? <laughs> oh no, I'm going to lose. Here we go. I think this one's a bit easier. Oh, Get up. oh god. No! Come on. Oh. No! Who's going to win? No! <laughs> <laughs> that was like a minute. May the best bean win. The rules are simple. Reach the top first and touch the crowd. Three, two, one, go. You know, when you've stood up. <laughs> oh, oh, God, that probably wasn't good. Uh, uh. <laughs> oh, oh God. I wanted that to be a boost. Here we go. <laughs> but you can't tell which this Wait, bit's supposed to be. Yeah, just. Oh, oh. oh God. The yeetus is the wrong way. I want it to push me up. Oh no! Oh god, I'm shit at my own game! Wait, I went the wrong way. Wait, the ball stopped it. No! Uh. <laughs> oh my god, you got... No. Oh, oh god. Oh, oh no, the ball! The ball's way okay. too strong! So jump, just jump into it. What about jump now, jump now, jump it? now! Hey! hey. <laughs> on my screen, I was on it. You win a very Get shit in. game of four, guys. Well done. <laughs> Got right there in the end. Rate that experience out of ten. That was at least a million. Someone tells me you're not being serious. A million father ten. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and there you have.
have it. It's not the most amazing and polished thing I've ever made, but for 26 hours, and considering I had to learn how to program for multiplayer, it's not that bad. Mediatonic, please don't sue me for my clearly flawless, completely original multiplayer experience. Something I want you to keep in mind is that while this took me 26 hours, it took me 26 hours over four consecutive days. Some people might have challenged themselves to do it in 24 consecutive hours, but I'm not into the whole working late or throughout the night unless I lose track of time or I have to as a last resort. It's unhealthy. Sleep is super important and it's sort of promoting a unhealthy work habit. 24 hours of optimal work performance is better than fluctuating performance over 24 hours. For some people it just works and if you're one of those people then fair enough but it's still something you should consider. It's super important to keep your own well-being no matter what you're doing and even more so when you're doing something you love. Remember to leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this and support me on Patreon if you want to. And if you hate the video,